Listen to my podcast about sports, about sports, about sports. Bitty, bitty, bop, Howdy, ads from the tailgate, home of Aggie football. What's up, Corey? Hey, buddy. How you been, brother man? Been doing well. Been a couple weeks since I talked to you, I guess, since the wedding. Since that wedding, out in the freezing cold, out in the middle of nowhere. In the house we stayed in, that didn't have any heat, it seemed like. Yeah. With uh, with all of great great grandma's stuff, no TV, no internet, we're <laughs> roughing it, roughing it. Corey, today's episode is brought to you by Matthews Electric, full service electrical contractors in the Brazos Valley. No job too big, no job too small. Call Blaine at nine seven nine two two zero six four zero three. Light up your home, light up your life. Yeah. Uh, folks, don't forget to email us at agstailgate at gmail.com or come find us on the YouTube Ags Tailgate. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Leave some commentary. Uh, usually we get to some of that on the show. Today we got so much stuff to cover that we're going to save some of that for the next one. Today's rundown brought to you by Frida Homes, Building Aggie Dreams, custom home builders with over 15 years of experience with the Brazos Valley. If you're looking for someone that cares about you and the details you care about, contact Frida Holmes. Give Justin a call at 979-450-4466. When you call, just remember, everyone loves their Frida Holmes. Frida Holmes. So a couple of interesting deals here, man. Corey, I don't know if you saw it, but I was uh, perusing ESPN as I normally do in the mornings while I'm taking a dump. And uh, the front... On ESPN.com, on their front page for college football, they've got an article. Franklin High's four-year state title run through the lens of Nash Pills. And I'm only bringing this up because when they speak of Franklin's run, of four straight title runs, yeah. they're speaking of Franklin, Texas, my friend. Just a few 40, 50 miles away from Bryan College Station, little 3A high school, Franklin, Texas, who's made it to, you know, four straight title games. And uh, they've lost this last one. But the cool part about this story is they're talking about a kid in town, Nash Pills, who's a junior there at Franklin High. His older brother played for Franklin High in their first title run. And uh, he's taken some extremely awesome pictures of all the sport events in Franklin. And it's a really neat article, really cool article. Nash has Down syndrome, but has, you know, sort of persevered through that process and is, man, making something of himself, doing something with himself. And I, it's just a really inspirational, man. I thought it was a very cool little deal. Cool story. Yeah. Franklin, Texas, y'all. Uh, moving on to some other Aggie sports, a few, a few, a few different things. Long time Texas A&M head women's Swimming and diving coach Steve Boltman is announcing his plan to retire at the end of the season. Uh, there's all kinds of accomplishments. He's been at AM for 25 years, um, 80 All Americans, 16 Olympians, conference championships, so on and so forth. Uh, Aggie basketball. <laughs> Corey, I don't know how much you want to talk about this because really and truly, Aggie basketball has been a little bit depressing this year. 12 and 8 overall so far, 3 and 4 in conference. They're number they're they're tenth in the SEC standings right now. They just got done losing to Ole Miss sixty eight to seventy one this past Saturday at home at Reed Arena. Um, they get they got a, a buy here during the week and they get Florida this weekend on Saturday again. Florida coming in at fourteen and six, four and three overall. Um, man, it is frustrating to watch this team. And we'll talk about some of the specific numbers, but you don't even have to, you know, you don't even have to look at the numbers. If you watch them, you can see it, right? There's just yeah. absolutely no consistency from anybody, maybe other than Anderson Garcia on this team. Well, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've watched the team play a few times and they have talent. It's crazy. It's just, and I like Buzz a lot and I'm not trying to bash Buzz, but it seems like the offense, there is no offense. It's everybody runs around and then they chunk it up. When you don't have a good shooting team, you got to start pounding the ball inside. I'm not talking to pounding the Coleman. I'm talking 
get Bradford some picks, get him driving to the bucket, get Wade driving to the bucket. That's what they did last year. They got to the foul line. They're not getting to the free throw line. They're not making the free throws, but they have to. Only Wade Taylor's shoot. making his free throws. They have to quit shooting so many damn threes. hefner has gone cold. The new guys, they're not shooting like we thought they would when they came in, but they're taking contested shots. And Buzz, he's a good coach. I mean, he, he teaches them to rebound. And Anderson Garcia in Washington, Coleman, they're rebounding the hell out of the ball. Corey, but if they don't get they the number of to. offensive rebounds that they do, they wouldn't have won a game all year. Because let me get to these yeah. numbers. This team as a <laughs> This team as a whole is shooting 39%. That's not 39% from three-point land. That's 39% from the field, man. From the field. You know what what that stands as far as rankings in the country? I do. I do know. 352nd out of 362 teams. I I want you to think about that for a second. Texas A&M's basketball team is... 352nd in the country in shooting percentage. Yeah, it feels like Jimbo's coaching them right now. And they're above 500, by the way. The numbers from three-point range, worse. Somehow worse. 26.7% from three-point range, which is 355th in the country. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care. You say you don't want to talk bad about Buzz. I'm going to talk bad about Buzz. And I've been the biggest Buzz Williams supporter on the planet for the last several years. The dude has done an incredible job over this time period in prior years, getting this team to play defense at a very high level and doing what he can with a limited roster at times. And the team have gotten better and better as the season's gone on. This team has gotten no better. As a matter of fact, it might've gotten worse since the season's begun. They, there is not one consistent player on this team other than Anderson Garcia, not with Wade Taylor. Wade Taylor's shooting like crap. The only reason he's scoring the way he is is because he's getting sent to the three the, the free throw line where he does make 80-something percent of his free throws, right? That is right. his only saving grace. Radford is inconsistent, can't, sh- can't shoot the ball to save his life, right? The guys oh, around it. them, look – Take Anderson Garcia out. That dude is doing everything he possibly can and all the th- things that are expected of him for this team. He's rebounding. Hell, he's our best three-point shooter, by the way. You know, but he doesn't shoot the ball. But he only he doesn't shoot the ball, right? So you got Hayden Hefner out there, and that Duncan. dude can't even hit the rim. He can't even hit the rim. You know? Hefner's got skills to do it, but he's just got some kind of mental thing going on, man. He started the season off hitting shots and now I don't, under, I don't get it. It's almost like he has the ifs, like over there at, you know, like Chuck Knobloch at second base. You yeah. Know? yeah, 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 yeah. I don't Omer Aggie, Chuck it. Knobloch. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's absolutely correct. And it seems like that those yips have, have gone to the entire team because Wade Taylor was a really good three-point shooter last year. He's, yeah. he's hitting 30% this year, right? But he's not taking good shots on the three. That's the problem. I mean, yeah, he's – they're not running an offense. Their offense seems – it doesn't seem like an offense. It seems like everybody's just running around and it's waiting to check it up. All dribble by Wade, up. all dribble by Radford, you know. I mean, so it – I don't know. It is stagnant. They don't go inside. They don't get the ball in to the bigs, Coleman inside, um, yeah. Anderson inside, Solomon inside. Uh, you know, none of those guys are getting touches in in the paint to try to set up some perimeter game. You know, Carter and Lawrence can't can't do anything, it seems like. I mean, offensively, it's not you know, at all. They, they don't seem to be fitting in. Right. So, and, uh, and that big guy, what's the big guy's name? The something. LeVert? LeVette? Yeah, he's he's uh, he and Marble are night and day. Marble had a hook shot and an offensive game for that. Well, but he doesn't even he doesn't guy. even get on the court, right? I mean, most games he plays maybe maybe ten minutes, maybe ten yeah. minutes, right? Well, and, I mean, I like the I like the lineup with Garcia, Washington, Bowman, Boots, and Wade. If that lineup right there, it's they, but, they call it going big, but but somebody's got to start making shots from the outside because there's no offense. There's no offense that can survive 
just that poor of a shooting team performance, right? right. I mean, you can't design an offense that's going to do something about, you know, to make up for that. They, it just doesn't exist. Somebody's got to hit some shots. And on the defensive side, you know, they're giving up they're they're giving up 68 and a half points per game, which is 101st in the country. It's not like they're a top end defensive team, right? Right. And so even defensively, uh, you know, they give up 34% three-point field goal percentage. That's 233rd in the country, right? It's they don't have the same defensive sort of mindset as they had in prior years man where these te this team was holding people in the 50s man you know a lot of turnovers and all those types of things and not you don't see that anymore and it's <clears throat> it's not because of necessarily because of effort i mean other than the fact that wade taylor may be one of the worst defenders in all of college basketball on on ball defenders let me let me rephrase that one of the worst yeah. on-ball defenders in all of college basketball. I mean, if he's defending you, just go straight to the basket. He's not going to get in your way. Don't worry about it. Just go right to the basket. He will not get in your way. Yeah, they should play every line for the Aggie defense or Aggie, and, Aggie offense. And the problem is he's the only guy scoring on this team. So it's not like you can take him off the court, right? Right. I mean, because you take Wade, Wade Taylor off this, te off this off the court for this team and they may score 30 points next time. 30. Yeah, it's not going to be pretty it's not gonna be you good. know. I don't. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe they become too dependent on Wade and somebody else, like Boots. I expected bigger things from him this year. I expected Solo to step up. I expected Garcia, who has in a way. But I mean, I think Garcia's guy, been excellent, man. I I can't I can't say one bad thing about Anderson Garcia. I think he's been the best player. I can on this take team. more shots. Take more shots. Get the ball. They need to get, get him the ball get on the rebounds, but get the ball. They need to get him the ball more inside. Let him do some things. Let him. I mean, he's got to figure out what that what that offensive game plan is because literally he's your you know he's been the guy that's made shots for you the most. A lot of that is on putbacks and rebounds and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, the guys, you know, he everything he does, he does well, and he does with a ton of effort, man. And are they playing tonight? No, they're off until Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. So today we talked about it a little bit earlier, right? We saw the bracketology on ESPN. ESPN in today's issue of bracketology said that they were today a one, a four seed, a 10 seed, right? 10 seed in first team with a bye. One of the first teams in with a bye. And so at 12 yeah. and eight, they're a 10 seed. This schedule, they've got 11 rem games remaining. They play Florida. This weekend, they play Tennessee yeah. twice, Bama, yeah. South Carolina, Georgia, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss. That's eight games against teams that are ranked that are higher in the standings in the SEC than they are. And this is a team that almost lost to Missouri, who's the worst team in the SEC, right? Well, they did lose to the worst Missouri. team. They lost to Arkansas, who was like the second worst team. Yeah, Arkansas, who at the time, who at the time. <laughs> I don't think I'd won a game in the SEC, right? Like, no, that's what I'm saying. It's look, this is the way they're playing right now. This team does not make the tournament. Mm, I agree with you. And I that's agree. with a roster returning from last year that everybody thought, man, we're going to make a run. So if they don't make the tournament, what do you do? You clean house, you start over. I think you have I mean, to. I like Buzz. Don't get me wrong. I like Buzz, but I think you, I think you got to, I, I think you got to clean house. And he, and you know I why? You know why? Because this this roster is set up for winning this year. And at the end of the day, they're going to lose a lot of this talent, a lot of their best players this off season, right? Wade Taylor's yeah. gone. Boots yeah. is gone, right? Like Coleman. They, what's Coleman, Coleman Junior? Coleman may be gone, right? Like, but like these guys, their best players are going to be gone. Next right. year's roster is, isn't going to have a scorer on it. You got to do we don't something. Have a great, we're not getting great recruiting classes either on the basketball no. side. I don't even know what freshman's playing this year. Anybody? No. I don't. That's no. what I'm saying. I don't think there is. No, there's not. There's not. And so I don't know. It's, I, uh, I love Buzz. Like I said, man, I've, I've been the biggest Buzz supporter. This team doesn't yeah. make the tournament. 
they they need to scrap yeah. the whole thing. And by the way, we're going to have a new AD who may very well want to bring in his own guy, right? What are they looking at for AD anyway? Oh, uh, they've they've put together a committee. I heard about them. Yep, big committee. I heard Slosh is on it, and a couple other uh, Joni uh, basketball coach Joni yeah. Taylor is on yeah. there, and some other folks. So, look, he's got he's. I mean, look, he's got a he's got a, a basically a month to turn this thing around, right? But they're yeah. going to have to play out of their minds for the rest of the month, and basically, you know, win. I don't know. What do you think? Eight of the last eleven to make to get in. They're going to be well over five hundred. With those last eleven games, they're going to win. Yeah, let's say eight of eleven. That's I don't see it happening. Eight. Let's say seven of eleven and win another game in the conference tournament. Let's say they still have to win eight more games. I think. But even if they win that many, where are they going to be sitting in the conference to play in the tournament? They're going to be playing that middle game against a good team. That yeah, it's honestly, not, they, it's they not they an easy run. The other team, not an easy run. The only game they've shot with the team was Kentucky, and they played out of their minds against Kentucky. Yeah. It's the only yeah. game they played any good, right? Yeah. Well, how good is Kentucky? I mean, they got their butts kicked by South Carolina, who I thought was overrated at the time. But, hell, South Carolina is pretty Carolina. good right now. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty yeah, good. Yeah, and they're playing against Tennessee right now, and they're giving Tennessee a ball game. Yeah. So so let's move on from basketball. I do think, you know, there's a lot to, there's a lot to digest there. Um, we'll see sort of what happens over the next week or so, and then we'll come back and talk about it again. But Aggie baseball – who everybody's got very high hopes for opens the season Friday, February the 16th at Bluebell Park. Uh, also field at Bluebell Park against McNeese. They're ranked eight, number eight in the nation, according to D1 Baseball. By the way, number eight in the nation is like number five in the SEC. So there you go. Um, but this team is loaded. Yeah. <laughs> like football. This team is loaded, man. And especially, you know, Jace Lavillette, who's had one of the most it impressive seasons by a freshman in yeah. a long time last year. And he's back obviously on this team to try to lead this offense. This offense should be absolutely putting up runs like crazy. You know, they've got the Braden Montgomery kid up from transferred from Stanford. Who's another big time bat. Right. And then, you know, but the lineup I think is stacked from top to bottom. I feel like this group is going to score a lot of runs. The question is, can the pitching rebound from last year, right? Two years ago, I thought the pitching staff did a great job. Last year, the pitching staff was garbage. And then in this year where they brought in some guys and they've got some talent in there, we know they got talented arms, guys that have pitched previously and done well. Can this coaching staff get the most out of those out of those pitchers? Because that's the difference between a team that's going to go out in the first round of the playoffs versus a team that can make it to the World Series, don't you think? Well, yeah, that kid Montgomery they got from Stanford, he's a pitcher as well. I mean, he doesn't yeah. just hit. He plays both. He goes both ways. So I mean, I'm not saying he's Shohei, but he's going to do some stuff. You know, him and Jace in that lineup. I can't, I got to go back and look and see who they lost. I know they lost quite a bit of talent too, but they're yeah, but a lot of the guys that they lost didn't have great seasons last year. So it's almost <laughs> it's, it's almost not that big of a deal, right? They it's do. You know, Targosh, Targosh has to have a bounce back this year, right? He's a guy that right. really struggled last year. Two years ago, he. He did a really good job, and, you know, last year he struggled all year long. You know, he's got to come back this year and have a much better season. I think if he can do that, obviously he'll be a part of this lineup. But they've got bats up and down the lineup, man. They've got they've got guys. Yeah. they got another freshman coming in that's considered a huge, huge, huge big-time player. And so, you know, he might be a contributor from day one, and and, and it actually I think yeah. he's kind of expected to be a contributor from day one. So, you know wow. – isn't that scary? You're counting on a freshman to be a contributor day one. That's I don't know. That's a lot of pressure. I think on a freshman. It could be, but I, I don't think you know. At the end of the day, I think they've got other other players. Don't get me wrong. It's not like he's the only guy. And this lineup is, that shouldn't be the problem for this team, right? Right. It'll be exciting to see. I'm excited to see for Aggie baseball, especially after the way basketball season's going. I'm excited for Aggie baseball to get started. See if we can get some positive traction on some sports around here. Um, well, that's that's the thing about our sports teams. I said it about football, basketball, same way. When we expect things, we seem let down. Last year, basketball, we weren't expecting so much. And Boom. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. year, baseball, we're expecting a lot. We're like, ah, all we can do is be let down. Yeah. If they don't go 35-0, and 0, we're probably going to be like, ah, something. 35-0, <laughs> I love the prediction. 
Uh, Whatever. I mean, how many baseball games they play? 50? I don't know. Uh, so let's let's talk a little football, man. This is a football podcast. Um, Do it. Maroon and White game scheduled April 20th at right. Kyle Field, man. April the 20th. They haven't announced the time and all that, but, you know, we've got a pretty good idea when, you know, when things are going to happen. And okay. uh, it, that's exciting, man. That's exciting in a year where you got to change in coaches and a coach change in coaches staff because everything's new, right? Everything's different. You're, you know, even, you know, how they structure the maroon and white game itself could be different, right? So right. Um, it, it should be, you know, that's a big day. I, you know, I'll be there. You know, I'm going to be watching intently, figure, trying to figure out exactly what's going on. But, you know, uh, this is probably the most exciting maroon and white game since the first one Jimbo Fisher had, right? I'm excited to see how Elko does the maroon and white game. I want to see if it's the same way that Jimbo did it. You know what I'm saying? I, I just I want to see how he does it. I want to see more of an aggressive you mean, approach. You want to know if he's going to stack the first team offense against the third team defense so that the offense yes. looks good like Jimbo did? Or well, the offense didn't look good. We always had our walk ons look good. <laughs> and yet the offense still didn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah like I, to see, I, I want to see that too. I want to see how he's um, doing. I was going to tell you, I listen, like I say, I listened to Tex Ags when I'm in the car. They were talking about which position groups they were most concerned about. And, and, We've got that. Me. We've got that topic on our on our rundown a little bit later. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. But yeah, I was just listening to Billy talk about today, and it's crazy. His position groups that he's worried about aren't the same ones I was worried about. Well, yeah, I'm interested in hearing which ones you're worried about, actually. And I've got that question in our script. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Go ahead. Uh, quick hit on recruiting. Look, I think. You know, from our conversations, I think we both believe Elko's done a really good job um, with the time that he had and sort of jumping into this deal. I mean, the recruiting class isn't isn't huge. He's got, you know, 14 signed. Of those 14, nine have already enrolled. And then there's two other guys that are expected to sign in February, including five-star Terry Bussey, right? And then an another offensive tackle, um a guy that was previously committed to duke and is now committed over over to us so that they should be signing in february but you know so that's a total of 16 total players 16 total what positions bussy playing again what position man he's an all-around guy but you know i think a lot of people are gonna play corner a lot of people think he's gonna play corner i wouldn't be surprised if he's a, if if he plays office to be honest with you especially where you think a wide receiver what sort of an Anaya Smith kind of guy? Don't I don't know, man. Maybe running awesome? back. Wow. Play him running back, wide receiver, slot. Just do all wow. kinds of stuff with him. I look. If I were an offensive coach, if I'm if I'm Klein, I'm doing yeah. everything I can right now to try to convince coach to give give me that dude on offense so that I can use him in a thousand different ways. Um, Have you watched any the tape ball on that kid yet? Huh? Have you had a chance. Have you watched any tape on that kid yet? Oh yeah, he's he's absolutely phenomenal, man. He can, I mean, he he's just super shifty one, right? Hard to get grasp on, and he's got he's got some wheels to him. So, like the dude is a he's he's got the potential to be a big time big time contributor. You know, obviously what did he play in high school, he he played everything in high school. He returned. He played quarterback. Quarterback, yeah. Really. Oh, okay. And so, but with that class, obviously, and, and he's still got a sign, right? But with that class of 16 freshmen, they also added 23 transfers, man. 23 transfers. And that's tops in the country as far as transfer rankings. Of course, it has a lot to do with the numbers, right? The numbers. Right. But they've ended up adding some big-time names as well. And those yeah, names include players. Ricks, at cornerback from, from Bama, right? The, right. the edge, Howell from Bowling Green, linebacker Scooby Williams from Florida, cornerback Saunders from Cal Poly is a pretty well highly rated guy. Ratcliffe, the safety from San Diego, Tatis, and defensive end Nick uh, Scorton. I mean, I think that dude is a huge, huge addition um, to this to this to this roster. Cornerback Will Lee from Kansas State, another guy that's going to be a, a a player on this team. Wide receiver Cyrus Howell. So you know, like those guys are are players. Like I. I f look, man, when we when we started this process and a lot of these transfers were being named and some of the other guys that I didn't just name, you know, it's like, ah, oh, man, they're adding depth, they're adding depth, they're adding depth, but they're not really adding difference makers. 
The guys that are going to get on the field a lot. Yeah, I got you. These guys, I think these guys are are guys that are going to get on the field and make plays for us. And I, right. and at the end of the day, to me, putting all that together along with the recruiting class, I think Elko's done a great job in the little bit, limited amount of time that he's had to do so. What do you think? No, I agree. I mean, the limited amount of time he's had and what we brought in, I like the size of these defensive backs he's bringing in. We don't have those guys that are, I don't think, going to give up the the one-on-one balls, you know what I'm saying? Like a 50-50. I think it's yeah. going to be more of a 60-40 our way now. It's not going to be a 50 or 60-40 their way. It seemed like it that way last year. It seems like everything that went up, the uh, other team was coming down with. And uh, I yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah I, like our, I like what they're doing. I like I like that with the secondary. I kind of wish we would have got more interior defensive linemen. That's a, that's a concern of mine, losing McKinley and uh, – you know, what's his name um, in the transfer portal? And we lost a few interior guys, but that's intact. But I mean, I like the corners. I like the edge rushers, something we haven't had in a while. Yeah, I, I, you know, those natural edge rushers for sure, I think is something that has, hasn't has necessarily been on this roster lately. Right. Um, and they definitely haven't gotten production from those guys uh, for sure. So – I do like well, that. They, they, I, they use our edge rushers out of place. They use them right. in drop back coverage, and I don't get that. I mean, you got an Overton out there that can be an edge rusher, but he's dropping he back can, into coverage and he's playing he that way. DJ Durkin has, uh, appears to be the new DC at Auburn. So just throwing that in there. Yay! Yay! We play Auburn this year? Yes. No, we Yay! don't. Yay! Yay! Run the ball. Just run the ball. Run the ball. He runs uh, a three man offensive line or defensive line. We're going right now. Run the football, baby. Run. Um, so you know, and and I started to look at the depth chart here recently, and here 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 in a couple of weeks we're going to do an episode on this on the depth chart, talk about where we expect guys to be, and all those types of things. So we'll get into a lot more detail. But I started to look at the depth chart, and I feel pretty good about it. Uh, before before we get into player specifics, let's talk a little bit about this coaching staff because now that coaching staff is complete, Elko has right. added everybody that he's going to add to this. Just recently added former Vandy offense coordinator Jordy Lynch as an analyst to this to this deal. I don't think that's quite finalized, finalized, but I think he's coming. Um, obviously, I don't on that offense staff, whole analyst thing. I don't understand the analyst thing. What that is? It just means that they can't. They're not on the field coaches that can coach the you know position or whatever. Klein. Okay. So offense. Klein is the OC. Taylor, the running backs coach. He's from Duke. Wiggins, right. the wide receivers coach from Bama. Cushing, the offensive line coach from Duke. Gavin Spurrier is another analyst coming in, a graduate guy. Uh, grandson of, of Steve Spurrier. Uh, I'll say Spurrier. That sounds familiar. Yeah, he played quarterback at Duke for a couple of seasons. I I use the word played very loosely, by the way. But, gotcha. but, you know, just focusing on this offensive staff, what do you think of this group as a whole? I I'm going to let you go first. Dude, it can't be any worse than what we've had. I mean, it's got to get better. It's got to be more creative. You got to have motion. You got to have, I mean, oh, if you and I can sit back and watch a game and tell you what's coming next, that's sad. That means the defense can probably do the same damn thing. You know, if you can tell me that the offensive line can't block and they're going to run another play where the offensive line is not going to block. Yeah. You know? Most plays don't well, work. I mean, I think it's all involved. upgrades. As of right now, it's all upgrades. The offensive line coach should be better. Can't be any worse. Uh, the play calling's going to be better. Can't be any worse. That's not my biggest thing. Is it can't the bar? They set the bar so low for the last couple of seasons. It can't do anything but get better. Yeah. You know, well, that's a great point. Nowhere to go but up. You got nowhere to go but up. That is a phenomenal point right there. And you know what? Here's here's the other. The other thing. I I don't know why you go off and go off and hire the former offensive coordinator of Vanderbilt because honestly, I was wondering that too. What's he going to bring to the table? That, did you really believe that that Vanderbilt offense was that great? Mm, probably not. Man, it's hard to judge a Vanderbilt coach because he doesn't have the tools to work with. If he, if he was in a system like uh, where they should be playing, like in a small conference, they might be good. But when you're playing against players that are that much better than you, you can't do much about it. Now, if you're in a program like A&M where you're evenly talented with teams that you're playing against and you still suck, that's coaching. You go to a place where you can't. Right. You're getting two stars so, and three stars against five stars, and you're just getting situation, beat up. 
look, in this situation, yeah. they're, they're, the guys that they brought in, Kansas State, Duke, Alabama, those are where these guys were previously coaching. The Kansas State offense was good, right? Yeah. The Bama offense, wide receivers specifically, have been good, right? The Duke yeah. offense was good. I wouldn't say that any one of these – offenses was phenomenal by the way no but not last year but both kansas state and duke have limitations as far as the players right the talent level so maybe right. that with the i wouldn't say duke's offense was good at all i just think they played out of their asses for elko i mean we didn't get but what one of their players maybe i think from the transfer portal or from recruiting we didn't want any of them did we no and so my point is that these guys, the but the, my point is exactly what you were talking about, that these guys are stepping <laughs> up in talent, right? So you would think yeah. that they, maybe that, that also can translate into going from a good offense to a right. really good, almost great, right. right? Exactly. I don't know. I don't know that we discussed <laughs> this last time, but here's the thing. The one thing I, I, I will caution, I will caution the Aggie fans right now. I will caution the Aggie fans right now because I need, it is important for them to realize Colin Klein's offense, Colin Klein's offense is run based. It is, you know, success of that offense is based on the running game. So this idea that this is going to be a wide open sling it all over the place. Let's look like Tennessee or whatever. That's not the case, right? That is not like what's going to happen here. You know, I like it. so you're going to have, you know, the, the running game is a big part of this. He will use the tight ends. He will have some motions and different things. I'm hopeful, though, that he can also adapt that offense to make sure that it meets the skills of Connor Wigman, right? Connor Wigman, who's not going to sit there and run the ball 10 times a game, you know, or you wouldn't expect so. You know, that's, that's a guy that can distribute the football to your playmakers on the outside. And if you ask me, if you ask me, that's the way this offense takes the next step. That and better blocking from your offensive line. No, I think you're going to play to your strength. I think Colin, uh, I think Klein's going to find out that his strength is run game at AM because the offensive line can't pass protect for shit the last couple of years. A lot of the same guys coming back. They couldn't I run think, block either, so it didn't. <laughs> I, mean, I think the run blocking was a lot stronger than what they got credit for. Yeah. Uh, I think the loss of Max Wright's going to hurt in the running game, even with Green coming back and uh, Swede and the transfers that we have. Um, but we have strong running backs in uh, a couple of those guys. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I hear that Moss might be on the Fritz. I'm not sure. That's a – we'll talk a little bit more about that. But, yeah, it, that's a concern for sure. But, but yeah, I mean, I think I, – I, I mean, we'll get into it later, but I'm, I'm concerned about our receiver depth. Look, if you ask me, if you ask me, this is – and I'm a believer that this team is stacked with talent. I'm not worried about the talent on this team. I'm worried about the coaching. And so – I've never been worried about the talent on this team. Can can Klein get what he needs to out of this staff? Can Cushing as the offensive line coach get what he needs out of these players? Can he get turned a corner with this offensive line? Can – you know, will Klein – allow these players to play instead of think, right? All those types of things, man, and just let them loose and go play. I feel okay about it. I don't, you know, like I'm 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 more positive than not at the moment with this where this coaching staff stands. I went back and watched some of Kansas State last year. I went back and watched some of Duke last year, see some of the things to expect. I think that once again, it's a mis, you know, if you're expecting this thing to be wide open and spread all the time, like that's a misconception, my man. That's a misconception. Don't expect that. This is going to be a run based offense with a lot of play action involved. Some of the things that he does, he does do a lot better is a lot of the misdirection stuff and uses some screen work with, you know, some screens in there and some different uh, type of uh, type of uh, uh trick plays and stuff like that right he he doesn't he's not like Jimbo that it's like okay we're gonna run this play over and over again right like whatever right 
change the formations. He does do some things in that area. He he does implement the motions. He does have a lot of misdirection in in his in his play calling. Now the question is, can you adapt that in a little bit more to give the guys on the outside and your athletes opportunities to make plays? Because that wasn't so, the Kansas State strength, right? It wasn't about the wide receivers. It wasn't that's about you know exactly what I was getting to. It's you're gonna play to your strengths. What are your strengths at AM? Your your talent everywhere, right? You have yeah. talent everywhere. So at Kansas State, you probably didn't have that everywhere. You probably didn't have the receivers that we possibly have here in Thomas and Muhammad. Yeah. You don't probably have the talented tight ends that we have here. I mean, they had good tight ends, but they didn't have probably what we have. We probably didn't have the same running backs. You put some of our running backs in their running game. So I'm thinking Klein's going to come in, and he might throw his whole playbook away and say, we're going to go through their strengths. What are we good at? What can we do well? And we're going to do that and perfect it. And then we're going to mix a little bit of other stuff in there, but not to where Jimbo was like, hey, we're going to throw the ball no matter. We're going to do this, and they're going to know it's coming, but we're going yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah that's what that, I, I guess that's what ultimately it comes down to what you said at the beginning. No matter what they do, what this offense, they're going to be a lot better than the last offensive staff, no matter what. Exactly. It's not, it's not rocket science. Sit there and say, hey, this isn't working. Let's do something different. Jimbo wouldn't do that. He kept doing the same thing over again, and we kept beating our heads against the wall. We were going crazy. And Jimbo's like – So let's move ball. over to the defensive side of things where, you know, Durkin at times had a good defense and going on, but – then he had all the, you know, when it really mattered, when it came to big time games and big time moments, he usually went to his three man line and got soft and all that stuff. So let's talk about defense because obviously Elko gets brought into this mix, but the DC is Bateman. They just brought in Peterson as a co DC DB's coach from Kansas. Peterson, former Aggie DB, right? Arch side is the other DB's coach. They brought him from Duke with Elko. Gerard Eddy, man, is a defensive lineman that I remember watching back when he was an Aggie. Loved the guy. I'm so happy yeah. that they've, they've kept him on board and that he's part of the staff, but he's coaching the D-line, along with Spencer, who they brought in from Florida. Now, we've talked about this a little bit before. right? I don't know why you're bringing in guys from Florida and, I guess, Duke defensively. Like I understand Duke because he came with Elko, right? But Right. The Florida guys, I don't know. Either way, as a whole, as a combination here, you know, I do like pieces of where, where the staff sits, especially, like I said, Peterson, Gerard Eddy, you know, we'll see where sort of the other guys, how the other guys come into play. And then going back and watching, you know, the Elko defenses. And, you know, I talked about it back then, and I always thought that sometimes Elko outthought himself at times, right? I thought he was, you know, really good when, you know, like it was third and long and he wanted to bring some exotic blitzes, man. It was great. But sometimes he did that stuff on first and second down and just got beat with the run, right? Yeah. And so I love the talent this, that we have defensively. Can this coaching staff, can this coaching staff that we just talked about get the most – out of the talent that we've got defensively. Well, he's Elko's proven he can do that because he did it at Duke. I mean, he got the most out of, I mean, three star players. He was beating four and five star players. He did that. So he's proven he can do that. My issue is going to be with what we lost and what we're putting in the place of him. I think the scheme's going to have to change. York played great last year, but he wasn't the main man. This year, he's the main man. You know, he's got big shoes to fill. He's not going to play the same position Coop did. The offense is not. That he's York not the athlete that Cooper is, so he can't be that guy. Right. No, he's not going to be that, but the offense is going to be focused on him, knowing that he, this guy can tackle. So, like, hey, he can wrap you up. Hey, what can he not do? How's his sideline to sideline? How's, how's he get downfield? What are we worried about? Can we? cover a running back out of the backfield. You know, that's that's just that Coop could cover somebody. He didn't have to do it as much last year because he was getting pressure on the quarterback. He, we saw him do it two years ago or a year ago. I mean, he did badass. But that's my – I mean, we got a lot of questions, and the talent is there. The coach is going to put these guys in position to be successful. And I think Elko will do that. 
Yeah, and I'll say this. I mean, look, I, I think the defense is going to be good. I think the defense is going to be good. I think the talent's good. And I think that Elko has enough, you know, scheme-wise that's going to be good. My my concern still becomes, you know, when it when it matters most, you know, is he going to let these guys line up and go? Like Nick at the defensive end, you know, at Purdue, he was lining up and he was going, right? And, you know, are right. they going to do that? Or is he going to is, is he going to do like Durkin did and, and like he did at times when he was the defensive coordinator here and, and back out the defensive ends, right? And send them to cover the flats. Because if okay. that's what's going to happen, it doesn't really matter, right? I mean, it doesn't really matter. You got to let your players go and let them play. But I want to remind Aggies. I want to remind Aggies. And in the years that Elko was the defensive coordinator here, the biggest problem we had was getting pressure on the damn quarterback. You know? So so it's not like back then we were sitting there and we had these defensive ends just coming off the edge and killing quarterbacks. That, that wasn't happening. Right. You know? And so this idea that, oh, okay, hey, man, we brought back Elko, man. This is it's time to get back to wrecking crew. Whoa, 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 whoa. hold on. Hold on. Well, you also gotta remember Elko's not gonna be the DC this year. He's he's a head coach. No, but he's already said he's he's basically going to be very involved in the defense. Well, his defense. I hope so. I hope so. Because I mean, we saw what happened when our other head coach was involved with the offense. <laughs> we saw that happen and if you need a head coach to be a head coach and put your put your head coaching hat on and make sure that you're managing your other coaches. That's yeah, the problem, and, Jimbo. But you Jimbo also hope that some of these up. other coaches, you also hope that some of these other coaches get over there and say, hey, look, uh, let's not be dumb. Let's go ahead and let our best rushers rush. Yeah. And, you know, let our best interior guys play the run and then so on and so forth. Right. Like, let's not overthink this. Right. You know, and so I, I is it going to happen? I don't know. I've seen I've seen enough of Elko where he's backing out defensive ends into the flats where, you know, he's doing t stunts and twists and stuff and whatever. And he's doing it on first down and people are running right by things like that. I mean, I've seen enough of Elko to see that. Now, don't get me wrong; he had good defenses here, but compared to the talent, he probably the defense was were, I guess, good. Okay, yeah, not terrible, yeah. right? Yeah, I hear you. You know, they weren't perfect. Is my point? They weren't perfect. They weren't wrecking thing. crew. They weren't wrecking crew defenses from back in the day of RC Slocum. My biggest thing is I'm not. It's high on this Aggie team. I'm I have I'm hopeful. I'm not going into the season saying, "Oh man, we're going to go to a bowl game. Or we're going to go to the national championship." I'm you're hoping that we seven win. and five. You're thinking seven. That's and five. what I'm thinking. I'm thinking six and six, seven and five. Let's just go five hundred this year. Get some recruiting better. Get more players. Make I want to see improvements. I want to see stuff where you and I can get on here and go. Offense looked better than what we thought. The uh, defense you know needs some of this and that and see where the holes we're going to fill you know i think we have a lot of talent i do think we have a lot of talent it's just a matter of the coaches coaching that talent that's a problem jimbo couldn't do he, he recruits the talent but he couldn't make them better he couldn't improve them and look at the guys they haven't gone to the nfl i How think if i think if nick saban was coaching the squad we'd win the sec well, Maybe he's here next year. Who knows? If Kirby Smart was coaching this squad, we'd win the SEC. That's what I think. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm not going to say that, but those guys, they, they're badass recruiters, too. I mean, you look at that Georgia and Alabama team, you got five star players up and down the lineup. Uh, I'm not saying I don't we know don't. if you've been a part of this, if you've been watching this podcast for the last couple of years. Oh, wait, you've been on it. This AM team has recruited as, at, at a high level for the, since Jimbo arrived, right? It's not a at question. At a high level, but we lose players every year a shit ton. I mean, shit, we just lost Nolan and, and our two top recruiting guys that we had. Nolan and Stewart. Yeah, the top two recruits that we had in that class. Hey, listen, Gone. we just Gone. got the best defensive end in, in the Big Ten, too, right? Yeah. The Transfer best force. defensive That's end in the Big got. Ten, he's on our squad now. By the way, teams in the Big Ten, Ohio State, Michigan, both pretty good, right? Best defensive yeah. end didn't play for them. They played for Purdue, and he's now an Aggie. I hear you. I understand. We'll see how that works out. I mean, I'm just saying, I don't like losing 
Nolans and no. Stewart's. But if they're not helping the team, if they – Well, but when you go seven and helping. five and five and seven in back-to-back years, that's what happens. You lose guys like that, right? No, I get it. That's why – I mean, I totally get that. But I just don't think that they were getting coached right either. Correct. And so now it has to be up to this coaching staff to turn that around, right? It can't – it's not going to be – the Look, do you think Elko's going to be a better recruiter than Jimbo? No. No. Nobody on the planet thinks that. So no. the only way this team gets better is if it's better coached, right? But he is better in the transfer reporter than Jimbo. <laughs> that is true. That is true, at least numbers-wise. No, but he is. How, he pay, how patient are you going to be with Elko? When are we going to call for Elko's head? After year one? I, if he goes, no, five and seven, no. he goes five and seven this year, yes. is he done? If he goes five and seven, you might as well fire him. Really? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What if he goes five and seven, his... you might as well fire him. The talent level is only going to go down from here. What did Nick Saban do his first year at Alabama? Um, won a bowl game? Sure. Pretty sure he lost to some shitty team his first year. and there... He did, but he had a winning record. A winning record. Oh, okay. And you know what he did his second year at Alabama? He won a national championship. He won a natty. And here's the other thing I'm going to tell you. I'm just saying. And here's the other thing I'm going to tell you. At Alabama, they weren't recruiting five-star players before he got there. He took the three-star players they were recruiting before he got there and turned them into a natty. That's different. He couldn't win a championship with five-star players his last year. So, I mean, the guy, it was time for him to go anyway. (laughs) He did the right thing. It was time. Look. Nobody in this planet believes that Elko's ultimately going to recruit better than than Jimbo did. No. And so to me, though, this team has to be much better coached. And and look, there is the opportunity to do that, right? Because the prior coaching staff was bad enough that you could, I mean, you could be a mediocre coaching staff and be a lot better, right? So they're right. going to have to coach a lot better than the prior staff to make this team a competitive team in the SEC, a competitive team with the SEC with an Alabama that I don't think is going anywhere with the board coming down, a Georgia that we know isn't going anywhere with Kirby Smart, a, a Texas team that is on the rise and has been the last couple of years, an Oklahoma yeah. team that's doing everything it can to keep its name relevant and through this process. What about Ole Miss? Tennessee, Ole Miss, who's going to be the – I mean, who's got probably their best chance to freaking win the SEC that they've ever had, ever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Tennessee – Who's sitting out there and maybe about to get hit with in, in NCAA violations again? Saw that, but yeah, saw that. But you know, these are teams that are on on the rise, not on not on the downside of where they're at, right? And and a lot of yeah. comp- competition. We haven't even talked about Florida, who's going to fire their coach after next year. And Missouri is good too, right? Huh? What about Missouri? Missouri. We hadn't talked about Missouri, who's going to have a chance at, at to win the league this coming season, right? They're one of the best I mean, teams. The, week, the only weak teams I see right now are like Arkansas looks weak, Vandy's weak, Mississippi uh, State. I don't know. Mississippi State, I think, will get better. K- Kentucky looks like they're not going to be as strong. Um, South Carolina, I don't know about them either. But I mean, the top tier teams, you got seven, eight teams up there out of the, what is it, 16 teams now? <laughs> so 50% of the teams are going to be top 20 teams. And you're spending money at A&M like you're a top-tier team. So now it's time to are perform they, that way. Are they spending money still? Well, we'll find out. Okay. <laughs> Questions from the tailgate brought to you by Providence Financial Coaching. Call Steve Gay, certified financial counsel at 863-732-6224. Integrity, accountability, resourcefulness, and financial coaching. Visit their website at ProvidenceFinancialCoaching.com. Over 20 years of experience in corporate finance, Aggie owned and operated. Question number one, and here we go, Corey. You've been wanting to talk about this all day, so here it is. Spring practice coming up. Which positions are you most excited to see? Which ones concern you the most? So let's start with excited. I'm excited to see the defensive backs, these new guys. It's all about new guys. I'm always excited about the new guys. I want to see this defensive end come off the edge, see if he's it's quick or if he's powerful, what he has. I want to see the I want to see the defensive backs if they're big, if they get up there and hit somebody, or if they're gonna play back off in coverage. Uh I'm excited about that. I want to see what the 
new line coach. So let me let me let me hit on that. Let, let me follow you up on the defensive side with excitement. Go ahead. I I cannot agree with you more. I am excited about this DBs. Let me give you some names yeah. here so that you understand the sort of depth. Remember how we were last year, and we could bar- basically, you know, barely even field a a defensive backfield at times, right? But yeah. listen to this one: DBs, listen. Lee, yeah, Kansas State, Anderson, yeah. Matthews, Ricks, Saunders, Alabama. Rogers, Per, mm-hmm. Thomas, Ratcliffe. These are all guys that can get on the field and go make plays. I just named. A bunch of dudes that can go play. A bunch. Right. That's exciting to me. I like it. And like you said, you go look at a lot of these guys, length, right? Yeah. No 5'10 length, guys. Athletes, athletes, athletes. Top yeah. tier. Big time. Um, so I agree with you. So offensively, what group are you excited about? Well, I mean, O line, no doubt. I'm excited about Green coming back at tight end. I think that has a totally different dimension than what we missed last year. The middle of the field, just as he's more of an athlete, nothing against Wright and those other guys. He's an athlete. The guy can do more than what Johnson, Wright did together. Um, I love that. But, let, let, let me hit that because I love the tight end commentary. Number one, we no longer have to see Johnson on the field missing a block. Perfect. Yeah. Right. Look, Green, you didn't mention Platt. Platt, the freshman from last year, I think he's a he's a, he's got the potential to be a big-time playmaker in the passing game as well. I love his athleticism and the things that he can do there. But, you yeah. know, like you said, then you add the transfers and the different guys that have experience that are going to be more physical. Green has all, always been a better blocker than Johnson and those guys before him. Man, I love that group. But the, the group I'm most excited about is the one you mentioned first, is the offensive line. And – You know, the reason being is because I think this offensive line has a lot of talent. I know they've been one of the worst groups in the country for the last couple of years. I think under the new tutelage of the new offensive line coach, Cushing, I think this group has a chance to really come out and show what the heck they're all about. And let me give you names because these names are all highly recruited guys. Zoom, Dewberry, Basantis, Fothery, Reed Adams, which is one of the tries, Crownover, Nabu, Foster. You know, all those guys are highly regarded, big time, big time recruits at the offensive line position. And I think this is the year where they start and get the turnaround that people have gone from where they're hated. This turnaround begins to where people start appreciating the Maroon Goons again, as as it was the case three years ago. Right. Yeah, I agree. I mean. I, I mean, you were asked excited. Now that also goes to my concerns. What you just so want to start concerns? You want to start offensive offensive concerns? Go with it. Offensive line still a concern to me. It's been our biggest. I mean, it's been our Achilles heel for the last few years. I mean, we can't keep a quarterback healthy because we can't protect him. We right. can't keep running back. Can't keep anybody healthy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, Jimbo complained. You know, they're not executing well. Coach him up. You know, coach him up. That's but. That's a that's a huge concern for me. It's still the offensive line until I see it better. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to see it in week one or two, whatever. It is. I mean, I want to see it against Notre Dame. I'm talking about the crappy teams that we play where they look like rock stars. I want to see. Yeah, no, you're absolutely correct, and that is still a concern offensively. One hundred percent, the biggest concern, not only the excitement, but the concern is still the offensive line. Because while we've already talked about it, you know, the new coaching staff can't be any worse. At the end of the day, we still want to see the production, right? And I think that these guys are talented enough that that they can make the turnaround pretty quickly. Um, but like I but we have to see it. We have to see it. And they, they've they got to start blocking. They And not only sort of physically actually blocking and staying on blocks, but even identifying stuff, right? A big problem for this Aggie offensive line over the last couple of years was they didn't even see it coming. Right. Guys were coming unblocked, untouched, never even seen. And not because the defense was bringing seven guys, but because the defense sort of brought a a stunt from somewhere or something like that. And so to see something worked out in that sense, to me, is a big, big step for this offensive line. And and it does bring some concern because we haven't seen it yet. 
Another, another concern. Another group that that you mentioned earlier is the wide receiver group, and oh yeah, that's where I'm, I'm not going. as concerned with this group. Oh, well, I am. I am Be because if you look at the names, and and I think you know Thomas, I, you know he started to show things some last year. You know injuries sort of hit him a little bit in the that's mid my concern is the year. depth. I'm concerned about the depth. Moose, look, I think Moose is a rock star waiting waiting to happen. Walker. Okay. I, I really loved what I saw Walker, especially towards the end of the year. Yeah. I think Micah Tease is a guy that's got an opportunity to take on a much bigger role. Cyrus Allen, the guy from La Tech, I think is a guy that's going to have some production in this offense. And you add to that the, the tight ends that we talked about already with Green, with Platt, with those guys. I think that's plenty and plenty of talent at wide receiver. And, you know, there's there's more. I'm just worried about the depth. I'm worried about the depth at wide receiver. Uh, Thomas has shown that he can get hurt, nicked up. Muhammad hadn't seen the field for some damn reason the last few years. T's unproven. Walker had a couple good games. Other games yeah. he'd disappear. Yeah. I'm just saying, I want consistency out of those guys. I don't see anybody coming back that is consistently – I think they have talent. They're not consistent. Like, Anias was consistent. Uh, Stewart, consistent. And I'm going to add this one here. If Bussy signs, I'm going to add him to that group because I'd love to see that dude in an Anias Smith role out of the backfield, in the slot, motion, across on, on, jet, on jet sweeps, on everything, right? That dude's an athlete. Get him the ball in 100 different ways. I'd love to see it. Ruben Owens. Give me Owens out of the backfield. They showed it last year. The guy – He's a unicorn to me. So he's we're got gonna, talent. I want to talk running backs. Owens. I want to talk running backs. Hold on, I'm not done yet with the, my concerns. I'm still concerned about defense. One thing I wanted to yeah. get back to your defense concerns. That's exactly where I wanted to go. I want. I'm concerned about our interior defensive line right now. When you lose two or three guys right there in the middle. That's a strength. You lose McKinley Jackson. You don't just replace him. Rakes. You, well, huh? Nolan Rakes. Exactly. You lost a lot of talent right there. And that interior, I'm worried about teams running on us. Because like you said, Elko's gonna run these stunts. Yeah. Let and me give York you my my counter to that to that point. My counter to that point yeah. on the defensive line is yeah. that I think Shamar Turner moves inside. And I think Shamar Turner is a ball player. I think that dude is gonna be a high draft pick. I think he's gonna be a difference maker. Who's beside him? DJ Hicks at, at the freshman from yeah. last year, right? He didn't get he didn't get as much reps last year. I think in his second year, that dude's gonna start showing up. You know, remember Nolan's second year a lot better. I think wow. he's a he's a part of that. You still have Regis in the mix, right? You still have Regis in the mix. You got Brunlow Dindy in there as well, who's a huge, yeah. huge, huge body, but also a guy that was very highly recruited. And and so you, you do have some pieces there um there's a couple of the transfer guys that are more interior type guys as well you know not as highly regarded obviously but but still not certain players, players, players. Players. players but right there i named four guys four guys that i feel very good about inside but there are no no offense to those guys uh turner might be on the same level as jackson and nolan but i don't think the rest of them are they're not going to demand double teams like we haven't jackson we haven't did. seen enough from hicks to say that I mean, you know, exactly. We didn't see enough of them. And yeah. I don't know why we did. Why did we not see enough of them last year? Because we had so much depth of guys that had already been on campus specifically. I mean, Nolan, but remember, I mean, what did Nolan really do as a freshman? He didn't, you know, he got on the, he field. Got on the field. He got on the field as a freshman. That's what I'm saying. Hicks never saw the field that much until the very end of the damn season. It just annoys me the way they did that. And I guess in that sense, there is a little concern there in the sense that Hicks and Brunlo Dindy are two guys that we just talked about that are probably in this regular rotation that that we're we haven't about. seen it from them yet, right? Exactly. I'm worried about who's going to take Cooper's spot. I mean, that's a big loss, dude. You lose an All American linebacker, a, a first that round is my concern. draft pick. If I had one yeah, defensive I mean, concern, it's linebacker. Yeah. My whole, I'm just worried about the interior of that defense. The outside, I think we have the talent, but if you don't have a good interior. You're screwed. I think York played great last year. Can he do it when teams are focused on him as the main guy? You know, because teams, if you're good, you can single out their weaknesses and the tackle. 
Yeah, there's going to be somebody that hasn't done it yet that has to step up in that other linebacker spot, whether it's Scooby Williams coming from Florida, you know, whether it's Sanford or Harris. I think Harris is a guy that athleticism-wise has the skill set to do what Cooper maybe. Jesus, is this the maybe. same Harris you've been talking about for two or three years? No, no, same Harris Harris as a freshman had a, had a nice year as a pass rusher. Last year they didn't use him as much, but – I think he's got that yeah. kind of potential, but last year they didn't use him as much because Cooper was on the field all the time. You know, well, that's Cooper what I'm saying. But you've been talking about this guy Harris about being maybe an edge rusher, maybe right. Shit, the guy can't get on a damn field. Johnson's I'm another guy. Chance Johnson's another guys. guy. So, but I, there's bodies there. But you, like you said, they're unproven, right? None of these guys have, exactly. have done it yet. We know what yeah. York can do. He's a downhill run stopper at linebacker. So he's got to have a complimentary piece there to be more of a sideline to sideline guy, demonstrate some of that athleticism and get after and get after it. So somebody's got to step up somebody. And, you know, linebackers is one of those positions. It's instinctive, right? Not only do you have to be physically gifted, but you have to have instincts to play that position. And so somebody has to be able to show that over the next, you know, over the next couple of months in spring, and then obviously into the fall as well, but who can take that position from Cooper and, you know, they're not going to be Cooper, but what can about they Anderson? Be... Is Anderson big enough? Is Anderson big enough to do it? No, no, Anderson. But now, you know, Anderson Mark taking Anderson. a step forward, Anderson taking a step forward, I think is a huge, is a huge benefit for this defense, right? I think last year, uh, you know, I, I don't think, I didn't think we saw as much from Anderson last year as we did even from two years ago when, man, he, every time he was on the field, he was just making plays, making plays, making plays. I thought last year they used him a lot more as a deep safety, which sort of took him out of the action a lot. So we'll see sort of where that, where, where the, you know, Elko and that defensive staff decides to use him. I also think that something we, we haven't talked about here is what is the effect of Moffitt on all these players? Because I do think there was some um, concern about the development of these guys physically over the last couple of years under the prior strength and conditioning coach. And you think, and I think that having Moffitt in there and having get, he's got his hands on him right now. He's has his hands on him right now. And to me, the, I think you're going to see a different development physically for all these guys. I think you're going to see, you know, Anderson being a little bit more physical, like guys like that, you know, and, and, you know, I remember those those LSU defensive backfields with guys like Peterson and all those guys that were just beasts, you know? Yeah. And they're, hey, whatever happened to Chappelle? What did we ever find out about Chappelle? Is he done? Is he gone? No, word, he, his dad, no word on where, where he's going yet, right? There's no... Wasn't his dad the one saying he was coming back? Dad just said getting ready for next year, and he had a picture of him in his Aggie jersey, but I imagine he that's the only picture he has of him, so who knows what that means. We haven't got a confirmation on him yet. I'd love to have him back, by the way. I would too. So let's go to your last your last piece. Uh, Some rumors that Le'Veon Moss is unhappy. If he leaves, how do you feel about the running back position? And are you concerned? We still have Owens. We still huh? have Owens and Daniels. Owens, Owens Daniels, and Daniels, and EJ Smith. Son of son of all time leading rusher Emmett Smith. Yeah. I'm not I'm not real worried. I mean, I can understand Moss. I like him. I'd love for him to stay, but I can understand the guy doesn't feel like he's gonna get touches. He might not feel like he's gonna get on the field because he might know that he's not as good as Owens. Owens, I think, like I said, I think that guy's gonna boom this year. I think he's gonna just blow I up. Actually, I think I actually disagree with that. I, I think Moss is a big loss. And now mind you, the rumor is Owens. the rumor Owens. is that. May he might be struggling with this coaching staff coaching him hard on like you know prior coaching staff, and so you know and if that's the case, look, love you man, but wow. gotta go. No, you I ain't worried about that. At that what they're doing today, the the what they're doing today, and the hard work they're putting in now is going to be the difference between him being gimpy all year and what he's done the last two years, or being on the field and making plays and being a high end type draft pick, right? I mean. But I think I think if he's here, I think if he's here, this this running back group is a lot better, right? I think he is a really good running back. But I think he's a good running back, but we we got a bunch of good running backs, and I've seen Klein in the system at K State. 
he can make you a good running back. I mean, he's done it with a guy that's five five. 150 pounds. Yeah. He put him bond in the NFL. Yeah. That guy, I mean, he's a, don't get me wrong, but you put a guy that small in the field, you're like, they gave him the ball a ton of times and worked around his strengths. Dude, I'd love to and, see uh, Owens and Moss in the same backfield, like, like some of the stuff he did at K State with two backs and the misdirection. Yeah. That to me, that would be, that would be absolutely unbelievable, right? I mean, those two. I, guys, I have to disagree with you. I, I think Owens is by far the most talented running back we have in that backfield. I think if you find different ways to get him the ball, that guy is going to blow up. And I think that Klein, I think Klein is the right offensive coordinator to get him the ball and blow him up like he did with Vaughn. He'll do the same thing. He's going to get him the ball in different situations. He can get to his best players. I'll tell you that much. He's not going to be here's a touch for you. I'm not sure Owens is our best player, but – I, I, I hear what you're saying. You're wrong. You're, you're, saying. you're wrong. That's all I can tell you. You're wrong. I hear what you're saying, though. And and I agree with you to a certain extent. And I, I think that there's enough touches for both of those guys in, in a split backfield. I also will say this. I also will say this. This is another place where I think Moffitt makes a difference. Because Owens, we saw him last year, right? And, like, a defensive, a defensive player would get, like, half a hand on him and he'd fall. Right. Oh yeah, he'll get he's got to get. He's got to go from freshman to sophomore physically. Right, strength. Mm -hmm. like the runner. He will, and he I will. think he will. I agree with you. I think he will, and I do believe that the dude has exceptional, exceptional talent. Right, so I think he's he's going to be up there. But you know, I think you're also taking away some with Moss. I don't know that you saw the full development of Moss. I thought he was starting to get into a groove late at some point past midseason where he was one of he was our best running back at one point you know and i do believe he i do believe that him as a junior owens as a sophomore and you're splitting carries with those two guys man you got a hell of a backfield and I, i'm not trying to take away from daniels by the way i think I daniels, say, what are you doing with daniels nothing nothing's wrong with daniels what about smith what are you doing with that guy i don't even know why he's on campus Ooh, damn I don't even know what right. I think. Wow. Yeah. All right, Emmett. Man, we're about to get some calls from Emmett Smith here. I mean, the guy yeah. didn't rush for a thousand yards at Stanford where he was getting carries. So uh, I don't know what he's going to do. Stanford suck. Man, I watched Stanford play. They suck. Yeah, they, they did. They suck. They did. They God, did. they were terrible. All right. So, I mean, literally, I mean, so you don't even think that it's going to, no effect. No effect. Moss, see you later. Um, none. Not with Klein as offensive coordinator. He's going to get the ball. Daniels isn't Moss. He's not going to run as hard between tackle. He runs hard. Moss is still back. Daniels is still a guy that's got great vision. He can make plays. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking away from that. They Daniels is a guy that's going to make goal line plays. Huh? Why were they giving the ball to Daniels on goal line plays last year? I never understood that. Because he can find yeah. the hole. That's why. He can find the but hole. But you got Moss and Owens, two bigger backs. Okay. Yeah, but Owens was not physical, so okay. he will be. We'll get further into the death chart a little bit more in depth on each one of these things right before some spring practice. And obviously, as spring practice goes forward, we'll keep reporting on what's going on, what we're seeing. Corey, it's kind of exciting because, man, it's a new thing. We don't have to worry about Jimbo's dumbass anymore. Now, now we're trying to figure out what a real coaching staff is going to do with some of this talent. Well, now we're worried about Buzz Williams' dumbass about our basketball team. There you go. There you got go. dumbasses all over the place. Hey, maybe Ohio State will hire Jimbo and Buzz after, now that uh... – Oh, yeah. That's a big genius. Well, brother, gig them. C-Money, AP, out. Adios, amigo. From the tailgate. Adios.